Chapter 4 The Mystery Trunk Mandy and James paid for their things while Mrs. Ponsonby went on and on about spies. Poor Mrs. McFarlane couldn't get a word in. Mrs. Ponsonby was still talking as they made their escape. Did you see Mrs. Ponsonby's face? James said, whooping with laughter as they left the store. I thought she was going to explode, Mandy said. She could hardly walk because she was laughing so hard. An egg! Oh, I wish I'd had a camera! And she thinks he's a spy, James said. Anybody can see he's a magician. Mandy looked thoughtful. I wonder if Jack knows that, she said. Let's go along to Hobart's Corner and see what we can find out. About Mr. Spalooney? James asked. Mandy nodded. We'll be the spies, she said, grinning. They didn't get as far as the garden gates at Hobart's Corner. Halfway along the high garden wall, Mandy stopped and looked around. Did you hear something? she said. James shook his head. Then the sound came again. Psst, said a voice above their heads. Mandy and James looked up. Jack was sprawled along the top of the garden wall. What are you doing up there? said James. Jack's face was lit up with excitement. I found out what's in Mr. Spleen's trunk, he exclaimed. It's amazing. Come and see. James headed for the gate, but Jack called him back. Up here, on the wall, the little boy said. I've got a great view. Mandy and James scrambled up the wall and perched beside Jack. What about Blackie? said Mandy, looking down at the Labrador. Blackie looked up at her and scampered off in the direction of the gate. Blackie! Mandy called softly, but he paid no attention to her. Wow! said James. Look at that, Mandy! Mandy looked where James was pointing. There was an apple tree right next to the wall, and she had to twist around to see through the leaves. Then she saw why Jack was so excited. Mr. Spallini was standing in the middle of the garden. There were two empty cages at his feet. One of them looked like a bird cage. The big black trunk stood wide open on the grass in front of them. He must have animals and birds, Mandy said softly. Those boxes were really pet cages. He's got a rabbit, Jack said. He brought a hutch from the pet shop in Walton for it. And Dad's put it beside Hoppy's hutch. He's got doves, too, but he keeps them in that big birdcage in his room. As they watched, Mr. Spleeny took a little table out of the trunk and set it on the grass. He took out a vase, then waved his hands in the air. Suddenly, he was holding a bunch of flowers. He popped the flowers into the vase and put the vase on the table. Mandy gasped with delight. Where did they come from? She said. I wish I could learn to do that for the play. James said. Isn't he great? said Jack, his eyes shining. Mr. Spleeny started to pull a long string of colored flags out of his mouth and draped them across the table. Did you see what he did with those flags? said James. It must have taken years to learn how to do that. Then Mr. Spleeny took off his top hat and pulled out a rabbit. He set down the rabbit on the table in front of him beside the flowers. The little animal settled down comfortably and began to clean its whiskers. Look, that's his rabbit, said Jack, delighted. But where are the doves? Mandy said. At that moment, Blackie came dashing through the garden gate and raced across the grass. Mr. Spleeny picked up the rabbit and it disappeared. He threw his hands in the air and four white doves fluttered into the sky. Blackie stopped and looked up. Then he started chasing the doves across the garden. Mr. Spleeny turned around and bowed to them. He's seen us, said Jack. Mr. Spleeny waved his hands twice in the air, and the doves came fluttering back and settled on his arms. One of them picked its way del delicately up his sleeve and sat on the magician's shoulder. You can come down now, Mr. Spleeny called to them. I hope you enjoyed my little show. Mandy, James, and Jack scrambled down from the wall. We weren't really spying on you, said James, blushing. Mr. Spleeny laughed. It's all right, he said, walking toward them. I knew Jack was there, and I thought I would give him a treat. That was great, Mr. Spleeny, Jack said. Uh-oh, said James, as Blackie ran across the grass toward them. Mr. Spleeny gathered the two doves together and put them into the birdcage, closing the door very gently. 
Then he hung the cage on a branch of the apple tree, well out of Blackie's reach. Oh, they're beautiful, Mandy breathed, looking at the doves. The birds ruffled their soft white feathers and settled down. How do you train them? James asked. Mr. Spleeny waved his hand over the birds. A river of corn fell from his fingers and dropped into the cage. With kindness and rewards, he said. It's the only way to train animals. I wish you could teach me a thing or two about training animals, James said, collaring Blackie. Mr. Spleeny stroked his beard. And perhaps magic tricks as well? James looked at the magician, his mouth open. Mr. Spleeny turned to Mandy. When I saw you in the store, you said James had to learn some magic tricks. Mandy nodded. We're putting on a school play, she said. James is going to be the Wizard of Welford. He has to do tricks. We're going to have some animals in the play as well. Mr. Spleeny smiled. And when is the play, he said. James bit his lip. Next Saturday, he said. We don't have much time. Mr. Spleeny shook his head. What you need is a little bit of magic, he said. Mandy smiled. Would you help us, Mr. Spleeny? she asked. Mr. Spleeny bowed. I'd be delighted, he said. It will be useful for me, too. A magician has to practice, you know, even when he is on vacation. That would be great, James said. Mr. Spleeny looked at Jack, who had a puzzled look on his face. What do you think, Jack? he said. I was wondering about the rabbit, he said, the one that disappeared. Mr. Spleeny laughed and reached under his cape. He brought out the rabbit and handed it to Jack. You see, he said, he's perfectly safe and well. Jack cuddled the rabbit and looked up at Mr. Spleeny. There are rabbits in the play, he said. I'm sure you'll like them. I'm sure I will too, said Mr. Spleeny. But we must get to work if James is to turn into a wizard by next Saturday. That will take a lot of magic. Mandy looked at Mr. Spleeny. Oh, you can do it, she said. I just know you can. 